Habakkuk chapter 2, one of my favorite prophets. The Lord showed me some things that I just wanted to share with you. It's kind of hard to follow up on all these great preachers we've had in the last couple of weeks. So you just have to say, Father, help me and give me a word for the body that's going to encourage them and feed them and help us to continue in your will. Habakkuk chapter 2, we're going to read verses 1 through 3. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. <coughs> and you know what? I, I'm reading a different version. <coughs> Actually, am I in the right chapter? Stand I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. I will watch to see what he will say unto me. And what <laughs> shall I answer when I am reproved? And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. And I want to just talk to you a little bit tonight about vision. First of all, you know, that is a, it's a subject that has a lot of I bet if I ask 10 different people in here what vision is, you could, all, you could all give me 10 different answers. It's kind of a big, obscure thing. I want to give you a, a quick definition. Vision is the God-given ability to see the destination or the, that God's God's destination, and I want to just say God's dream from a part for you. Amen. I believe that. Amen. Hallelujah. God's plan or dream from afar. Let's see. Just now, we understand natural vision. If you have good vision, you can see for a long distance. If you have bad vision, like some do here, you can't even see the clock a foot from your bed in the morning. <laughs> stumbling around for glasses but spiritual vision is the God-given ability to see God's dream or plan from you from afar from a great distance I can see I've been able to see for a long time what God wants to do in this church but vision has there are a couple things that happens with vision one vision has expectations and it has requirements yeah, if you have a pen, I would suggest you write some of this down because it will be a blessing to you later. I know because it blessed me. Vision has expectations. One, he told Habakkuk, you must make it plain and you must write it down. Why do you make it plain and write it down? One, if you don't make it plain, most of us don't have brains enough to keep it straight. We forget. Two, we need to remember. We need to keep it in front of us. And we're going to be looking at Abraham tonight. We're not going to read our whole, the whole book, but I suggest you can read it when you get home. The uh, 12th through the 20th chapter of Exodus, or Genesis. You need to make it plain and you need to write it down. Keep that vision in front of your face so you know where you're going. <laughs> So those are, vision has requirements also. The first requirement of vision is obedience. And if you don't get past obedience, you're not going anywhere. Abraham was told, God's, God's vision for him is, I'm going to make of you a great nation, and I want you to leave the Ur of Chaldees, the land of your fathers, and go to a place that I, have, I will show you. And I'm going to make of you a great nation, and you will be great in the earth and have descendants more than the stars of the sky or the sand that, than you could count. And you all know that account. <clears throat> but Abraham had to do something, and vision always has a requirement of obedience. You have to step out. Abraham had to leave Ur of Chaldees. <coughs> he had to leave his father's house. He had to, it says that he took Sarah and Lot, Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his nephew, and left his father's house, and he didn't know where he was going, and sometimes destination, vision is, you, you see it far off, and that was his, that was his vision. I know God is taking me to a land that I don't know where it is. He's going to make a great nation out of me, but 
Yet I have to go somewhere. He, you have to step out of your comfort zone. That's true. You have to get out of where you're going and take a step. If you don't pass the requirement of obedience, <coughs> you may as well not ask him not to tell you. The, the next thing, vision, vision will always be tested. And this is what the Lord was really dealing with me about. And I'm going to, I just, I found that there are at least seven tests. And I'm going to try to go through these quick because we don't have time to read all the scriptures. Vision will be tested. So if God has given you a vision for something in your life, for something in the body of Christ, for something in the church, <coughs> your vision is going to be tested. That's true. It will be. We already talked about the uh, requirement of obedience. But the first test is obedience and perseverance. When you don't, when you step out of your door and you're not immediately at work, <coughs> it takes perseverance to get your tail into the car. And sometimes it takes a whole lot of perseverance to deal with the traffic. Yeah. So you, have, you need perseverance and patience. That's your first test. Yeah. When Abram stepped out of Ur, when he crossed the border, he didn't immediately arrive in Canaan. He had to keep going. <coughs> and you would read about that in Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 5. And if you go on through um, <clears throat> the rest of that chapter, he had several places along the, along the way, just at the beginning of his journey. He had to pass through Shechem, which is a desirable location in a, in a valley that means to reside permanently, to stay, and it would be a place of ease, you know? There's always a, a testing of a place of ease because if you're gonna step out and, and obey God, the first test is will you, will you continue on your journey even when it's uncomfortable? Because you'll be tested with a place of ease. It's a lot easier to sit home on church night, on Bible study night, on prayer night and watch Blacklist or whatever it is you like to watch. Baseball, whatever. That's a place of ease. So you'll be tested with a place of ease. And will you be persistent or patient to persevere? in the vision. <coughs> the next place he came to was more, which means independent, bright, or smooth. That's even more. That's even, that's another place. Okay, God, I know you've told me to go and I've stepped out, but here I am, I'm gonna do it my way. This is bright, this is smooth. If I can make it happen, I'm gonna be independent. The next test, is a test of barrenness or dryness. Because after they got on the road, they entered, they came, there was a famine in the land. You can believe that you're gonna be tested with dryness and barrenness. Has anybody ever experienced spiritual dryness? Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. Feeling dry, feeling barren. <coughs> if I could just get a drink, if I could just feel God's presence. And the temptation there is to make it work yourself. And Abraham this encountered this. They came into this <coughs> area and there was a famine. So what did they do? We said, you know what? There's a famine here. Let's just go down to Egypt. And we know Egypt is the world. Let's just go down to Egypt. And there's no famine there. But Abraham got himself into trouble in Egypt. The, the only good thing about that is, you know, God's grace, he will even when you make a mistake and try to do things on your yes, own, he will. Absolutely. He will. He will. His grace will bring you out because Abraham, when Abram left Egypt, he he left with the riches and goods of Egypt. <coughs> the Pharaoh blessed him. So even though he made a big mistake and tried to do it on his own and almost got himself and Sarai killed, God blessed him anyway. <coughs> <coughs> 